Hey guys, we're gonna get things started. Just, uh, I know there's still some people joining, but I would prefer to get things started on time so that we don't keep you guys here all night, even though uh, I'd love to. And if those of you guys who wanna stick around for even longer are more than welcome to, but uh, I'm Jen, I'll get to that in a little bit, but for now, I'm just gonna get you guys started. Again, this is uh, only the second time I've ever run a uh, web conference, so bear with me as I uh, figure out how all this works. Um, and I'm noticing that there's some issues with the screen share right now, but we're good. All right, guys. So um, again, a few questions have already come up. Uh, and if you guys have any questions along the way, you guys are welcome to use the chat to submit questions directed at myself or any of the speakers throughout the web conference today. We're trying to get to as many of your notes as possible throughout the session, and I'll make sure to respond by email if we don't get to something, uh, especially for the sponsors if you guys have any questions. Uh, we'll also be sending a record of this web conference today to our FTech family following the session. But again, as I mentioned, we did have around 200 alumni and sponsors registered for today, and uh, we're really excited to see you guys all. So uh, let's get started. And I will figure out how this works as we go. So this is our agenda for today. And I am just catching up here. So uh, thank you guys uh, for joining us for our first ever Fight to End Cancer virtual meetup. Uh, meetups like this are gonna be very important to our FTech family as we move forward. We're inspired by the number of alumni and sponsors and volunteers who have joined us today. Uh, today's situation will change the way our world operates moving forward once we're allowed to go to back to whatever the new normal is gonna be, uh, which I know we're all very anxiously awaiting. Um, these virtual meetups have been the beginning of a new movement, allowing ongoing communication within our community and including our FTech community. These meetings are going to be a good opportunity to get the wheels turning, to develop concepts, discussions, and solutions. Also, to keep us also uh, inspired, which leads us into, into this meeting. The purpose for today's session will be to bring our FTech family together, provide updates and insight into what we've been doing with the Princess Margaret Cancer Center. And we want to keep our fighters, sponsors, and ambassadors motivated to keep involved, healthy, and also help everyone through this challenging time. Um, this will be hopefully the first of many meetups uh, virtually, but hopefully sooner than later, uh, actually in person. But this has actually been really cool for me. I've been had the opportunity to work with a couple of different organizations, bringing people together like this. And I've also had a couple of birthday parties. Uh, I know that Blair and Arnold on, are on here, and I had a birthday party with them earlier this week. Or, earlier this month. I can't figure out what day it is anymore. Um, but we'll use these meetups to roll out information and plans as they become available. Currently, the situation is still day by day and we're unable to project when we can even open the doors to Kingsway Boxing and get the fighters back into training. So uh, what we do know is that we want to continue to fight to end cancer and that defeat is not an option. That's our model. That's, uh, I don't know if you guys can see my uh, screen still. That is what we wear on our gloves and what we punch each other in the face with. So while our doors remain closed to the gym, our Fight to End Cancer family remains dedicated to our vision of conquering cancer with the Princess Margaret Cancer Foundation. But first we must conquer COVID, which is uh, part of why we brought you guys together today. So again, bear with me as I figure out how this presentation works. And we're good. We actually have Dr. Irish, uh, Chief Sur Surgical Oncology for the Princess Margaret Cancer C Center on today. Um, he's actually just keeping watch with us and uh, he's cheering us on tonight. Um, when we connected recently, so when I talked with uh, Dr. Irish recently about the reality at the hospital right now, he told me that it was anything but business as usual. Um, every year, Dr. Irish sits ringside personally cheering on the fight team. He gives tours of the hospital and the research center to our sponsors and FTech family. Actually, earlier this, um, I think it was earlier this year, I'm losing track of days. Uh, he took the family through the FTech fighters, through the cancer center, and showed them what, uh, what they do, which is absolutely incredible. And I encourage you guys, when the doors open to the hospitals again, to take that tour. Um, in addition to the incredible work, research and treatment of cancer, he and his team have added 3D printing of personal protective equipment, along with swabs used for testing COVID-19. So in Dr. Irish's words, who would have thought six months ago that our GTX lab 3D printers would be repurposed and in collaboration with Ryerson and Autodesk would be printing out visors to protect our healthcare workers and that our GTX OR would be set up to ventilate four plus patients using one ventilator with our engineering expertise, or that GTX engineers, scientists, 
or sorry, engineers and scientists become door screeners to ensure that we keep infection out of our hospital. Honestly, truly, necessity is the mother of intervention. Without your support of our engineers and scientists, this would not be possible. And I thank you. I thought you should know what your support so has been sort of able to do for us that, and most importantly for our community. Now is a time as Canadians and as healthcare workers to protect our own and see this through. Take care and stay healthy and safe, John. And we have another set up there with the MSEC circuit. So when he told me this, it woke me up to the reality of how important the support we provide to the Princess Margaret is now more than ever. Later, later in this meetup, I'll introduce Kat Aptekar of the Princess Margaret Cancer Center. Actually, she's actually of the Princess Margaret Cancer Foundation to give you an update on our Conquer COVID campaign. I pulled together some inspirational members of our, of our FTech family today to keep us inspired. The team will share their journey, suggestions, and resources. But before we get started, we want to honor those who have recently lost to cancer. We would like to take this opportunity to honor Maureen Steenhill, a Phytan cancer member who recently left us far too soon. In the words of FTech fighter Kim Kalastrick, and I'm sorry if I'm pronouncing her name wrong, I think I've done that for a very long time, but um, in 2017, I fought in the Phytan cancer. And Maureen was one of the reasons why I did it. Maureen was a childhood friend of my husband, and she passed away recently after a long, valiant fight. We were heartbroken at her passing. Our deepest condolences go out to Maureen's family and friends, and the many others who have been affected by cancer. Please take a moment with us as we honor those who we've lost to cancer with the traditional boxing 10 bell salute. And I'm going to get that working in a second. So um, I hopefully you guys can kind of see that. I will put myself on in a bit. I'm just trying not to lose uh, track of all of the people that I know I need to put up. So I just put up a picture. So my name is Jennifer Huggins. I'm the owner of Kingsway Boxing in Toronto. And it keeps on enlarging my face, I believe. There we go. Um, I am the founder of Fight to End Cancer and the president actually just recently of Boxing Ontario. And I've spent my life traveling the world as a performer and international boxing referee and judge. But I'm most honored to have the opportunity, the opportunity to invest back into our community through such an important cause. Though it's been a challenging time for all of us since the start of this pandemic, our FTEC family have continued to find ways to inspire us all and forge forward. So I wanted to share with you guys some of the uh, things that have been going on. Uh, one of them, and I'm sure those of you guys who follow us on social media have been seeing some of the things that uh, have been happening throughout this time. And not all of them have been about COVID, but they've all been surrounding, uh, I guess, the situation that's been brought upon us. And I know that's a very real situation for a lot of people. So it's been something really beautiful for us to see some of the stories that have come out of this, including Paige and Rob. Paige and Rob fought with us in 2015. And they actually, um, during that time, I, it would be better if I let them tell the story. So I'll send you guys a link or if you haven't seen it. I actually um, did a video for them because at the beginning of the pandemic, they were supposed to be getting married. They had a wedding planned for the very first weekend when everything shut down. Um, it canceled their wedding, but they still exchanged vows. And Virgil and I were actually lucky enough to show up and from more than a six foot distance, videotape and take photos of their wedding, which was not really a wedding because that hasn't happened yet, but it was an exchange of vows. So I wanted to share with you guys a quick video. I hope they're not going to kill me for this. Um, they met in 2015 at Fight Tan Cancer and it looks like they're going to spend the rest of their lives together.
would have guessed that our wedding date would coincide with a global pandemic? Then again, who would have guessed that I'd be marrying someone that loves reality TV as much as you do? And yet, here we are, and I couldn't be happier. Robert, as I stand here reading these vows on what would have been our wedding day, I am overwhelmed with emotion. On one hand, I am worried and a little sad that this day isn't happening the way I had originally planned for at this moment, and that there is so much uncertainty in the world right now. But on the other hand, I am filled with even more joy and love because I have never been as certain about anything as I am about you. Do you take me, Caroline, getting you to be your lawfully wedded wife? I do. I haven't told oh. from this before. <laughs> now I do. <laughs> Now you can kiss me. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Love you. Love you too. Love you too. Love you guys. <laughs> because I'm still in love with you, I want to see you dance again. Because I'm still in love with you. On this heart is We were very, very lucky, uh, and I think we all really are, to have this incredible family. Um, Paige and Rob met through Fight to End Cancer, and I am so proud to be a part of that incredible journey that they had, and I think that we're all part of that incredible journey that they will continue to have, and we all continue to have together. Um, but again, we're really lucky to have people as well, like Mariella, who um, I can be very, very honest with you guys. We're all family here beginning of the pandemic, I was really nervous of continuing to fight to end cancer at this time. I was really nervous that it came off that we were being selfish in fighting for something that was not as, I guess, acute of a situation as COVID was. But uh, it's been very clear to me, especially since looking into what the Princess Margaret, when Dr. Irish is doing uh, and his team, how absolutely incredibly important it still is, and even more now than ever to keep on fighting. And um, I have to thank, you know, Paige, Rob, Mariella, our family for continuing to fight and continuing to remind even people like myself, who is supposed to be inspiration behind Fight Dying Cancer to keep on fighting at these times. And Mariella, who just uh, ran her boot camp last weekend, she was able to raise uh, an additional um, $2,000 for the Fight Tan Cancer, and she's brought her total raise since 2016 to $22,000 in donations. So she has proven to me that, you know, it is just absolutely what we stand for. We are unstoppable in this fight. Uh, we are going to conquer COVID and continue to fight tan cancer all together. And again, this is why we brought you together, just to kind of give you a bit of an idea of what we've been working on. I can't wait to hear from Kat a little bit more about it. There's another one, and I'm going to try to find uh, Antonio in a second. But uh, the Vienna Estates actually has been another one who have been fighting alongside of us since 2017 um, in a few other ways as well through RV Law. But right now, I know a lot of you guys have found uh, drinking is, I'm going to stop sharing this uh, screen for a second. So I know a lot of you, including myself, um, we've all been probably partaking in a little bit too much wine lately, uh, which is totally fine, especially if you're drinking Vienna Estates, because Vienna is um, a sponsor for Fight Tan Cancer. It's our official wine of the Fight Tan Cancer. And Antonio, actually, as I find him, uh, will explain to you a little bit more about uh, what it is that you can do to support Fight Tan Cancer through drinking. So I am going to try to find, I found you, Antonio, but I'm trying to figure out a way of uh, spotlighting you. So bear with me, guys. You can just look at my face for now. <laughs> wow, I'm looking through all the people who've joined us, guys. This is incredible. This is, I'm so happy. Um, Antonio, I don't see your screen, but I have you unmuted right now. Yeah, so I'm unmuted. I don't think I have a webcam on this uh, screen that I'm using right now, so I apologize. But yeah, everything you said is uh, spot on. We continue to sell Founders Blend quite successfully. It's a uh, wine of choice for, for so many of our, uh, of our uh, great customers. And we're taking orders. Jen, I don't know if you have that email that I sent recently about uh, VNE delivering. 
Yes, actually. So if anyone wants to uh, make an order of Vienna Estates, we do have, and I will spotlight it on our website, we do have the ability for you to, I, I don't know legally if we can sell it online for you guys, but we can definitely put you in touch with Vienna and with Antonio. So you guys can uh, order it by the case. Yeah, that's wonderful. So that's, that's one thing that we're doing. And obviously, not everyone is in the St. Catharines and uh, surrounding Niagara region. So to facilitate, we're actually delivering. So free of charge, and that uh, should be added incentive. Amazing. And if um, and the Founders Blend, actually, if, I wouldn't mind, since I've got you, um, can you explain to the team what the Founders Blend represents? You know what, I'll probably email, um, but the, the, the back of the label it just sort of tells, tells the story best. It, it speaks of the, the fact that we launched it in support of Fight 10 Cancer, and so there it is right there. Yeah, that's wonderful. So it, it talks about how we wanted to honor my dad, first and foremost, who fought uh, valiantly. And unfortunately, we lost him October 5th, 2017. But wanted to make sure that that, uh, that his passing um, was not just in, in, that his battle really was not in vain. And so we continue to battle and, and we, we get to do both. We, we honor him and we battle at the same time with this particular wine. And then we have a really nice uh, feature article that that uh, is is uh, affiliated with that picture that Jen showed earlier of her and I, and that describes our choice of a uh, blend and why we went with Cabernet Franc and Bac Noir, the meaning behind that, the resiliency of those two particular varietals, and uh, so much meaning really behind this this uh, this wine that we we launched to both uh, support. FTX efforts and to honor my dad at the same time. So really the, the support that you, Jen, and Verge and, and the entire FTEC team have given us uh, is, has been added as inspiration. It's mean, it means every single day, it reminds me of, of why um, we really knocked it out of the park with this partnership. So I'm happy to continue in this effort, happy to promote it every single day and uh, happy to drink it really. I mean, I drink it every single night. So drink up. <laughs> and uh, you also have a um, bed and breakfast that uh, you guys have an event space. I know you were mentioning something about the possibility of we when have, this is all over. <laughs> yeah, we have, we have the B&B space. And then more recently, we've added a, a, an event venue. So it's a full feature hall. And that's where we were going to have our fundraising campaign. Uh, and we still will have it. So just as you put off the FTEC 2020 to May of 2021, we, we followed suit and we pushed ours off to March of 2021. And that date Beautiful. might change. We'll, we'll just have to gauge uh, as we go. Um, nobody really knows what's going on and when this, this thing, the, the lockdown may, may come to an end. Um, so we're, we'll all be in touch, email and, and Zoom meetings such as these and we'll, uh, we'll resume. But the, the plan right now is to pick up in March, a few months before FTEC 2020. Awesome. Well, I am very excited. I can't, I think all of us can't wait to really celebrate, but as Antonio said, you guys can go to the LCBO or you can order uh, directly from the Vienna Estates. And again, if you guys need to get that information, please email me. I have a lot of wine in my wine. I don't have a wine cellar. I just have a lot of wine in my house right now. And it's been really, really great. And it goes with everything and it goes with nothing as well. You can just drink it on its own. So uh, please get in touch with me if you guys want to make an order or if you guys are waiting in line at the LCBO next time, uh, definitely pick up a bottle of it. Thank you so much, Antonio. So the, the other thing you could do is just email me directly. So my first name at rvlaw.ca. So A-N-T-O-N-I-O -N at R, like Richard, V, like Victor, Law, dot T-A. And I can uh, flip the article over as well, the little video that explains the wine. And we'll take it from there. Jen, thanks for the opportunity. Thank you so much. Awesome, Antonio. Very good, guys. Um, all right. So let me uh, bring it back over to the screen so you guys can see the next uh, slide. So... Um, as you guys know, uh, the decision to postpone the gala was heartbreaking for the fighters, but a necessary step in the pandemic, uh, I guess in light of the pandemic. Uh, though we're uncertain when business or events or even sport will return to operation, we're determined to continue moving forward where possible. 
We are aware that the financial and emotional hardships that, biz that businesses are facing right now, including many of our partners, we actually have Grafton Apparel and Landscape Plus uh, speaking to this shortly. Um, even Kingsway Boxing, as you guys know, is closed down right now, which has been really tough. But at the same time, uh, we are planning the start of sports again. Actually, the Olympics was rescheduled as well to be in July of next year. So we know for sure, and I know from the sports angle, that things will have to go back to some sort of normal. So this is what we're planning for. Um, we're confident by next year we'll be able to celebrate alongside of the, uh, the fight team all the hard work and dedica dedication it will have taken for us to reach our next gala. FTEC 2020 will be continued in 2021. I don't, I'm still looking for a name for this, so if you guys have any ideas, FTEC 2020.1, FTEC 2020 and a half, I don't, I don't know. <laughs> but if you guys have any ideas, please let me know. Um, but we will continue to raise hope and awareness with this year's team. Uh, all sponsorships and tickets and donations will carry over to the 2021 dates, including our FTEC 2021 Charity Boxing Gala, which has been rescheduled to June 5th, um, which is Saturday, June 5th of next year. Now, the original date had come out as May, but we decided to, um, we decided to make sure that it was even further away from right now. So June 5th, we like, the, we like June. June seems like a nice time. And I like Lillian's, uh, Lillian's suggestion. Lillian's our web designer and everything else, uh, FTEC 2020 AC, after COVID. I like that. So, and that will actually be our 10th year, um, even though we're missing our ninth year, but it's all good. Uh, we do have many ambassador events on the horizon for this year, including our second annual Pound for Pound Photo Gallery, which is gonna be hosted with our partners at Steam Whistle and brought to you by Fujifilm. Uh, our feature photographers actually have been anxiously awaiting this show and the prints are waiting to be displayed. We actually have the prints sitting at the gym, so they're ready and waiting and we can't wait. And the Princess Margaret, sorry, Princess Margaret for sure as well. But the Steam Whistle is really excited to be able to um, host as, as one of their first events as soon as their doors open again. So today's meetup, um, the reason why I brought you guys here, and I know it's taken a little bit longer, so if anyone has to jump off, again, we will send the uh, record to you guys. Uh, it'll include an update from the FTEC 2020 team, and now FTEC 2021 team, an update from our presenting sponsors, and the launch of Princess Margaret's Conquer COVID for Cancer Fund. I see Kat in here, so I will be able to find her, I hope, easier than I found the rest of our people. Um, so, by the way, it's Kat's uh, day after her birthday today, and uh, we will wish you a happy birthday, Kat, and I hope you had a really, really big Zoom birthday party. Um, I'm still looking for Kat, sorry, Kat. If you want to put your hand up in front of the screen so I can see you waving, Kat, then I can find you really, really quickly. There you are. Okay, perfect. So everybody, this is Kat Aptekar, and I will unmute you so that uh, people can hear you. Um, she is of the Princess Margaret Cancer Foundation, and we are really excited to have you here, Kat. So can you, uh, are we able to hear you? Can you hear me now? Perfectly. Yes, definitely. So yeah, I'm really great. happy to have you on here so you can explain to people the uh, Conquer, for, uh, Conquer COVID for Cancer Fund. Uh, we've been starting to shoot it out through our website and we actually have set up a uh, donation page on our site for it, but I'd love it if you can uh, update everyone about what it is. Yeah, so I'll give you guys kind of just like a, a quick summary of what the fund is and how the funds are going to be supported. So firstly, I want to thank Jen, Virgil, and all of you amazing people on this call for your continuous support and uh, it's definitely a difficult time for us um, because of everything that's going on and COVID um, and in regards to kind of just all of our events being postponed and canceled for this year. And it's, it's bittersweet because, you know, we're going through a pandemic, but at the same time, like cancer doesn't stop and people are being affected daily. So it's definitely hard um, on all of us and specifically like at the cancer center. Um, so what we've really done is we've created a brand new fund called Conquer COVID for Cancer Fund. And I'll give you guys a quick summary. So it really supports three um, main initiatives. And one is being um, supporting vulnerable cancer patients. Two, it's supporting frontline workers. And three, um, it's gonna be supporting clinical trials. So in regards to vulnerable patients, some of the funding will go um, through, you know, to kind of help with 
technology because we currently have a no visitor policy at the cancer center. So some of this funding will go towards purchasing tablets and iPads to help patients connect with family and friends to kind of help them ease their anxiety during this time, whether they're going through treatment, um, but especially those in palliative care, they really can't have anyone there to kind of help them through this time. So some of the funding will definitely be going towards that. Um, of course, we are looking to fund frontline workers. And so they're most definitely putting their lives at risk every single day coming into work. So some initiatives that we've launched and we're currently doing is um, free parking near the cancer center. And so that's really to reduce exposure on public transportation. And we're at this point able to provide that for two months. So the last month they've, this has been provided and they're able to kind of do it for this month. Um, meals, drinks, snacks to keep them hydrated, well energized during their shifts and hotel accommodations so uh, they can avoid the risk of spreading COVID to their families. And lastly, for clinical trials, um, this will be specifically to help ways to stop COVID-19 in its tracks with a special focus on protecting cancer patients and frontline staff during this time. So kind of what Jen mentioned, um, we've already created a page where people can support this, um, a Conquer COVID page within the fight website. So any funds that are raised on that page will go specifically to that fund and kind of facilitate um, the things that we're raising money for. Um, and then I'll just quickly, so something that we've recently just kind of launched and we're in the process of kind of trying to increase awareness of this. So this is really new. And so um, we're looking at ways of how people um, can kind of showcase on their social media how they're supporting COVID and specifically for Princess Margaret. So we're looking to launch a brand new kind of social media campaign. And so I'll kind of give you an idea of how it works and then I can kind of send an email to you, Jen, and give you really the specifics. So uh, we're encouraging those that are interested to kind of help along with this. And so essentially what you would do is you would add um, the COVID link, but in this case, you could add the, the link that we've created for the fight. And you would take a photo or video of something that you'd usually be spending money on. So, you know, it could be a haircut, it could be your daily coffee, dinner, drinks, and so you would kind of take a photo of you of you actually doing that. And then you would add this hashtag called hashtag skipped it, shared it. And then you would tag PMCF and, and in this case, tag the fight um, page. And it would be essentially, you'd be nominating people to kind of participate. So an example would be today I spent, um, I didn't spend anything on coffee or blank or whatever it is. So I'm using that money to conquer cancer for COVID, donate today and then kind of provide the link in your in your bio. So that's something that we're really kind of trying to push out internally with our team and, and kind of really kind of facilitate that and then nominate our own friends and family and kind of try to um, get some traction authentically. So that could be a way if you guys were interested to kind of somehow support and no little, no donation is too little. Um, you know, it's like, for example, like I didn't travel too far to work today. So I put the 325 uh, where it counts. And in this case, it's a fight against cancer and COVID. So it'd be you know, you could take a picture of you kind of going down your stairs to your, you know, that's your daily commute to work these days. So we're kind of just trying to be fun and a little bit playful um, and just raise some extra funds for this specific COVID fund. So that's kind of where we're at in regards to, to raising money for COVID. That's awesome. So if um, you can actually share the link with me, I can share it with the team through the chat and that'll yeah, go up. I'll definitely well. do that. Awesome. Thank you, Kat, so much. That's awesome. And again, if anyone has any questions or even any ideas for us on different strategies we can do to raise funds for Conquer COVID for Cancer campaign. So it's basically, we're all trying to work together to conquer COVID so we can get back to living our lives, but also so that we can get back to um, not worrying so much about even just leaving our homes right now and the, the doctors who are taking care of not just the COVID patients, but also cancer patients right now at the hospital are, have an added stress right now, added pressure of what they might bring home to their families. I mean, there were already, it was already not an easy thing. I think that was one thing that was really interesting when we took the uh, tour with, I've taken the tour once with Dr. Irish, where he was able to show us just how absolutely incredible he has. I mean, he's going to have to correct me another day, but he has 
surgeries that last. I know the one he was going to do the next day after seeing us was 14 hours. I'm sure there's surgeries that are much longer, but an average day for him is that long of a day of just surgeries for cancer and research for cancer and taking us on tours. And now he also has a family that he has to bring back whatever he's bringing back. And hopefully that's nothing because we're taking care of the doctors over at Princess Margaret and at the hospitals with the UHN. So, and if I'm not mistaken, Kat, um, the Conquer uh, COVID for Cancer Fund, that one also, is that to um, support the UHN and the different hospitals as well? Oh, I've got you muted, sorry. Go ahead. So this one's specific to Princess Margaret. Okay, perfect. And the, um, and the doctors right now, the things that uh, Dr. Irish is working on, uh, that one, uh, I guess he's, yeah, he'd be better to answer this, but he's printing, he's 3D printing, um, and I know he just mentioned that, but he's 3D printing different um, pr uh, protective uh, equipment. That one is as well for Princess Margaret? Yes, that's for Princess Margaret. Perfect. Awesome. Very cool. Good All right. Well, you. thank you. Yeah. Awesome, guys. So we're going to uh, forge ahead. We're almost, uh, we're getting there. We're getting there. That's awesome. Happy birthday again, Kat. Um, so up next is uh, Jim Mosher. Um, he is a family friend, but he's also a presenting sponsor for the, uh, for the Princess Margaret, for the Fight to End Cancer, our annual gala. Um, so Landscape Plus is helmed by Jim Mosher and the Mosher family, including FTEC committee members, TJ, Lynn, and Betty Ann Mosher. They've been designing and installing beautiful landscape oases, I don't know if I'm saying that right, for their clients and are established as a staple in the greater Toronto landscaping community since its inception in 1984, which is when I was one years old. Um, landscape Plus has been a proud supporter of the Fight to End Cancer since its inaugural year in 2012. Jim and the entire Landscape Plus team have continued to increase their commitment to our cause with each passing year. They've made their mission to give back to the community as much as possible and are particularly strong believers in the fight to end cancer's ultimate vision of knocking out cancer in our lifetime. So I'm actually, I figured out how to find Jim without making him wave. I will spotlight you now, Jim, and you are now also unmuted. <laughs> so I'd like to uh, introduce you guys. This is Jim. I know those of you guys who've been to the gala have seen Jim uh, up on stage in the ring uh, whenever I pull him up, but now you're seeing him in your living rooms or in your homes or in your bedrooms. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, is the, um, lots of electronic meetings lately, but I'm a real Luddite at this. Um, you can ask my sisters. Uh, I don't know whether I'm on a call or not on a call, things like that, so excuse me. Uh, and then I see my some white-haired guy in the corner of the screen. I wonder who that is. So it's really weird. This is all weird. <laughs> so, um, yeah, time flies. Our affiliation with... Uh, with FTEC and Princess Margaret, it's been a while. And, uh, but you know, actually I, I can't really imagine uh, our company without this affiliation. Um, it's amazing how it just sort of becomes a part of who you are and all that sort of stuff. And it's good, it's all good. Uh, tough times right now, for sure, for all kinds of businesses and people in general and whatnot. And, and I've been doing a lot of musing for sure. Um, and I was wondering what was going to be happening with the event. And I was, you know, uh, as the things started to progress, but I'm really grateful that it's, uh, it's still going to be around for sure. Um, I don't think there's ever a time when being a grown up was more overrated than right now. Um, I've never been a time when I've been more confused uh, about pretty much everything. Um, I don't think there's been a time when I feel like I know less. I, I really don't know much at all, but but I'm, I'm messed up. You know, I think about business and whatnot. I'm, my brain goes, you know, we're trying to develop policies uh, to face COVID-19 so that we can start to function as a business, but are these policies and procedures really effective? Or do we know exactly what we're fighting? No. So I'm kind of confused on that. Economics, whether it be business economics or Toronto economics or Ontario economics or Canada International, don't know much about that. Definitely don't know much about how to survive in a house full of, uh, of dear relatives that are way close all the time and not mad, you know, mad possibly kill each other. The other evening I found myself downstairs uh, dusting the furnace. Um, I don't know, 28 years I've never dusted a furnace and I have no notion of why I would even want to dust the furnace, but there I was. So, so you know, things are a little off for sure. 
the news cycle is jammed with all kinds of huge important items and and I think we kind of alluded to this previously and they're all happening at the same time like nothing happens in a vacuum so there's all kinds of balls in the air and collisions of events and everything and it's totally exhausting for everybody we all know it's totally exhausting so what I'm looking for I seem to be looking for is tools to help me get through this and I think there's principles and qualities that are in the fight to end cancer um, affiliation that we can pull out and use and I'm trying to pull them out and use them as tools too I mean there's there's resilience for sure I mean anyone tuning into this has had some experience with cancer and if you had some experience with cancer you're definitely a resilient person and I like being around resilient people so I'm good with that um, tenacity for sure if you've been down this road tenacity is definitely a quality to have and I love being around tenacious people Empathy and respect for sure. They're huge in our thoughts and interactions and FTech is loaded with empathy and respect. So, so as a company and as individuals, um, we're looking for something to grab hold of and something with it's good and then we can co collectively move this ball forward and, and that's really important. And that's, you know, that's something I know and that's something I'm solid on. So, you know, we're here, we're on the team this year, we'll be on the team next year, we'll be on the team the next year, we'll be on the team the next year. We're here. And, I mean, uh, and we really appreciate the opportunity. We appreciate the opportunity. So thank you, everybody. And, and let's go. Thank you, Jim. Um, I think that uh, one thing that is kind of interesting, and I learned this when I was on the tour with you last year of the, uh, gosh, it was it have been two years ago when we took the tour of the Princess Margaret, uh, I think it was the Toronto General. Uh, was it your mom who was, uh, sh she did, what, do you know what kind of surgery it was that she did over there? Yeah, it's got a big name that I can no longer pronounce, and, um, but she was in there. Yeah, so it was uh, it was interesting when we walked in with uh, Jim, and it was it was a memory of, I guess this is where his mom's life was saved. So this is there's a real deep connection, and Jim, it means the world to us that you say that you'll be there next year and the year after that because I know as a small business right now, it is hard to even say as a small business for Kingsway Boxing that we'll be there next year or the year after that. We will be there in some capacity as a business. And I know that even for Landscape Plus right now, um, it's one of those things where, you know, I think it was Jim who said it to me. It was probably about two, three years ago when he said to me that he wouldn't want to have, you know, his company without this affiliation with uh, Fight Tan Cancer, which made me think, I'm like, you know what? Kingsway Boxing for Virgil and I is something that goes hand in hand with the community. Uh, it doesn't just go hand in hand with the community, it goes hand in hand with a fight. And so does our fight team, the Fight Down Cancer fight team. So we're very, very, very fortunate to have this family right now. Um, earlier, I showed you guys some videos and some pictures of some people who are involved with the fight. Jim's involved with the fight. I actually don't know if Lance is up next and um, I'm not sure if Lance, if you wanna wave your hand, I will give an introduction to you, but I don't see, I know Allison um, Martin from Grafton Apparel is on, but I definitely don't see Lance. So if Lance is here, uh, awesome. If not, uh, Allison, I'm not sure if you'd be up to speaking on Lance's behalf, but um, I think Lance is one hour behind us. Uh, he's, in, um, he's in Texas right now, but I will give a quick introduction. And if not, I'll just do a couple of, uh, I'll, I'll set you up right now, Allison, to know that I'll probably put you on while we look for Lance. Um, so I'd like to introduce you to our partners from Grafton Apparel. They've been in our corner since 2014 and continue, continue to find new and innovative ways to raise funds and awareness for the fight tank cancer. In 2018, the Grafton family, including Tip Top Tailors, George Richards, Mr. Big and Tall, and Kingsport launched their Wear Your Support in-store campaign, which exchanges a fight tank cancer tie bar, or actually now uh, next event is gonna have a lapel pin as well. Um, and basically that is for just a donation. So for every, oh, I'm not even sharing his face. Let me share his face. Sorry, I just realized that it's still looking at me. That's Lance. So this is Lance Itkoff. Uh, he's the president of Grafton Apparel. And as I was saying that they have a, um, a donation set up uh, that basically $20 or more will buy you a, uh, sorry, $20 of a donation or more will buy you a tie bar and a donation to the Fight Tank Cancer in support of the Princess Margaret. 100% of that goes to the Princess Margaret. 100% 100 of their proceeds from the sales of these tie bars and everything else that they do in store. Um, and along with 
over 100, sorry, 1,100 employees across the country have raised over $400,000 since they've started doing their wear, wear Your Support campaign. We could not be prouder to have Grafton Apparel in our corner as we work towards smashing barriers and reaching new heights for cancer research with Fight to End Cancer and the Princess Margaret Cancer Foundation. We're blown away by the dedication and loyalty they've shown our cause over the years and look forward to many more years of success and collaboration. And I think I see a message coming in from possibly Allison's, Allison's saying that her kids are going nuts. Um, so I believe if Lance, if you end up on here, Allison, if you know that Lance ends up back on here, um, let me know and I will get him to come onto the chat. Um, but otherwise, we will move on because we have the fighters um, coming up next. And uh, let me just bring that up in a second. So I'd like to introduce to you guys um, the fight team who've taken months of punches to their face to literally fight to end cancer. And they actually have put together a video to show you what they've been doing. So hopefully you guys can see this okay. A total rumble, young man rumble. A total rumble, young man rumble. A total rumble, young man rumble. Ready for the man. Hi everyone, Mike the Closer Forshee here from your FTech 2020 and now 2021 fight team. On behalf of the FTech family, I would like to thank all first responders, medical staff, and frontline workers for your heroic efforts during these unprecedented times. I would also like to thank all of the sponsors and supporters of FTech for sticking with us during these uncertain times. I know the entire team is looking forward to the time when we can get back in the gym to start training to put on a great show for a great cause in 2021. Thank you for all of your support and stay safe. Hey everyone, coming to you live from the Sullivan Family Kitchen. We're just doing our part here. Uh, stay in put, cook my family some healthy meals, teach them grade three and one, squeeze them in some real estate while we can. I've said, I don't miss the gym too much. Hey guys, just been doing a lot of working out from home, doing online videos with Jen and Verge. And I can't wait to see all you guys in the KBC studio when we return. And I'm really excited for Attack 2021. Hey guys, I've been punching a lot of dough lately in my free time. And by dough, it's the dough that has to do with cookies. And unfortunately, not anyone in the ring. But Kristen, I am trying to outweigh the amount of baking with my workouts over here. So trying to keep up with that. And I'll see you guys in 2021. Hey guys, just hanging out here at home with two of my new best friends. My husband's somewhere hiding in the house. He thinks we're playing hide and go seek. It's about 8 a.m. So I figure I'll go find him around dinner time. Well, I hope my opponent's using her time at home just as wisely as I am, because let's be honest, I've seen better hands on a digital clock. As you know, many of the Fight to End Cancer's initiatives for 2020 have been cancelled due to the threat posed by COVID-19, including the much-anticipated Fight Night. But at FTech, defeat remains not an option, and we continue to fight cancer every day. So you won't be getting rid of me or my wink that easy. I'll see you ringside 2021. 99. Uh, hundred. Hey everyone, just finishing up my workout here on this bright, sunny, gorgeous day uh, in preparation for my fight. Uh, just really trying to stay in shape uh, as we uh, self-isolate. I hope everyone's doing well. Stay safe. FTech 2020. FTech 2021. It doesn't matter what year it is. Joey Wu, first Avenger, is coming for you. And in the process, we're gonna defeat cancer in our lifetime. Doesn't matter if it's coronavirus, cancer, defeat is not an option. Stay safe, stay smiling, and we'll see you in the gym soon. Oh, hey, FTech fam. Wanna try some cake? My gloves are getting awfully sad not being used, so I repurposed them as oven mitts. They're not the greatest for that though, so let's get them back in the gym as soon as possible. Might need to move up away class too though, so. Oh well, see you soon. Awesome. So 
that was uh, that was our FTech Byte team who have um, also decided that they not only have already dedicated the past five, almost six months to fighting in cancer with our team, but they have also decided that they are going to spend the next year fighting with our team so that we can get to FTEC 2021. So I want to thank the fight team for being so incredible. And I want to introduce you to Josh, Joshua Seagal. I'm pronouncing it like Seagal. I'm not sure if that's even the correct way of pronouncing it. I have a year to figure it out. Um, Joshua is one of our fighters on the fight team. And he's also married to Yulia, the one with the oven mitts. Um, the oven mitts and the beautiful cookies. I'm not sure what she was baking, but I am really excited to introduce you guys. And Josh is going to speak on behalf of the FTech fight team today. And I'm just going to pull up Josh right now. Josh is going to be unmuted in one second. Yeah, I see you. And you're here. You're here with us. Amazing. I, I got to be honest. I'm a little worried. My opponent's out there doing um, sit-ups and exercising. I'm just sitting here drinking Vanny wine. So I'm in big trouble for 2021. I better get my training going a little bit better. Um, but for tonight, I want to take everybody back to Sunday, March 29th. And I know it seems like a lifetime ago, but amazingly, that was just one, albeit one very long month ago. At that time, the realities of physical distancing, the impact of the coronavirus, and the concept of shutting down our economy were, were just starting to truly hit home. At this point, we've been away from the gym for about, eh, say, a week or so, and the withdrawal was real. For those of you who haven't trained before, it might be hard to imagine, but we were actually starting to really miss getting punched in the face. Now, we stare down the month of May. Our economy is still shut down. Uncertainty is still running rampant. And the path to normalcy still seems a little blurry. So you may be wondering, why am I bringing up some random, seemingly unimportant date in late March? It was that evening that Jen and Verge brought the FTEC 2020 fight team, myself, my wife, and eight other incredible human beings together virtually to share some news and get our thoughts. This was a date when we found out the FTEC 2020 gala wasn't happening. It couldn't happen. As we stared at our little Zoom boxes of the family we'd been training with for the past few months, the two fearless leaders of Fight Dan Cancer asked us a question. When you signed up for this, you signed up for one of the most intense six months of your lives. No one signed up for a two-year commitment. If you can't do this, we understand. You're all still the FTEC 2020 fight team, but if 2021 is not something you can commit to, you still have our deepest respect and love. Think about what you want to do. Now, I didn't hesitate. I turned to Yulia, smiled, turned back to the camera and exclaimed, 2020, 2021, it doesn't matter. Joey Wu, I'm coming after you. In retrospect, it was a flippant answer to a big decision. You see, when we started this FTEC journey, myself and Yulia had been married for just a little over a year. Our fellow fighter, Kristen Smitty Smith, was in the same boat, living those newlywed vibes. And you know what someone training for an amateur boxing match can't do? Uh, that's right, they can't get pregnant and start a family. I imagine the decision wasn't gonna be much easier for our heavyweight main event fighters. Mike and Scott both have young children at home. And as someone who is trying to balance a full-time job with full-time training without having kids, I can't even begin to imagine the juggling act of work, training, and parenting. As we got off the call, Yulia, as she always tries to do, reined me in a bit. We should probably talk about this, right? Are we okay putting off starting a family are we okay bouncing work in FTEC for another year? Clearly, you can see which of the two of us is the more thoughtful human being. We slept on it. We also started to wonder what the rest of our fight team was thinking. Who was still gonna be in? For those willing to stay on, what would happen if their opponent wasn't able to? In a world which seemed to have so much uncertainty, here we were getting hit with some more. The next morning, Yulia positioned her thoughts in a much better way than I ever could have. We have to do this. This is so much bigger than when we started. What started as a journey about your grandparents is about so much more now. So many folks have stepped up to support us. So many folks have found meaning, purpose, and connection because of this journey. 
We owe it to them to see this through. Over the coming days, we wondered which fighters would be in. In retrospect, it was a stupid question. I've trained beside these eight superheroes. I've seen their work ethic. I've watched their determination. I've literally felt their fighting spirit punch me in the face. When it comes to fight to end cancer, there's a phrase that should have told me that all 10 members of the fight team would step up and become the FTAC 2021 fight team. Defeat is not an option. A week after hearing that the FTAC 2020 team was now the FTAC 2021 team, the universe gave me and Yulia a very real reminder of why our fight is so utterly important. My uncle, the owner of the business, which is sponsoring my shorts on fight night, was diagnosed with early stage colon cancer. Now, in a normal world, this would have been a best case cancer diagnosis. Prostate cancer in and itself has one of the highest recovery rates. They caught it as early as they could have. Now, no cancer diagnosis is a good one, but this is probably the best you can get. That being said, as we heard earlier, COVID-19 complicates pretty much everything. So the family was certainly feeling the stress. After my father gave me the news, I, I called my uncle Joe. Now my uncle is normally an incredibly blunt and stoic man. So I shouldn't have been surprised by his take on things, but I just love how he perfectly captured the essence of the F-Tech motto. I'm not worried, I'll do what the doctor says, I'll get my treatment, I'll beat this, we'll move on, it is what it is. Uncle Joe knows defeat is not an option. When Jen asked me to speak on behalf of the fight team, I, I tried to think of the one message I wanted everyone listening to take away. Between myself, Yulia, Joey, Alyssa times two, Mike, Scott, Paula, Kristen, Megan, what do we need you to know more than anything else. Know that we are unbelievably grateful for each and every one of you. If you're on this call, that alone means you care. It means you've supported our fight in one capacity or the other. Know that defeat is not an option for us. We won't stop training. We won't stop fighting. Know that together, we truly believe we can end cancer in our lifetime. So to each of you on this call, thank you. Thank you for supporting us. Thank you for believing in us. And thank you for tuning in tonight. One final note, just please stay healthy, stay happy. And of course, keep your hands up. <laughs> I'm not letting you go that easily. Everyone's clapping for you. I don't know if you've got the gallery view on, but we absolutely, wow. Uh, you just about made me cry. Um, I'm not sure these tears will come through Zoom, but it, it is, beyond something that Virgil and I can put into words, uh, how honored we are that the team is behind, I mean, the fight team. It is incredible that we have so many of you guys on with us on this call, but the fight team committing yourselves in that way to be able to continue on with us in a way that none of us ever saw or even saw as a possibility. This is something that for all across the board, across the world, no one saw this coming. But the fact that, you know, you guys are adapting, the fact that you guys are still here, and the fact that the 50 some odd people are still on this call with us today, thank you so much. And I actually want to, since I have you, Josh, um, <laughs> you're such a great talker. Uh, I think if there's one thing that surprised you outside of COVID, becoming a fight to end cancer fighter, and uh, besides a pandemic, what would that be? Just because there's a few people who are on the call who are still interested in joining the fight as fighters. Um, so I think that I might actually spotlight a couple of you guys since we have a bit of time. If anyone has to leave again, we will send this out to you guys. So I totally understand. Today we brought everyone together just to be able to update you guys. So if you guys are leaving, love you all. But uh, since we have you, Josh, and I'm not sure how long we have you for, what besides the COVID uh, pandemic was it that kind of surprised you most about jumping on board as a fighter? Uh, yeah, so it's, it's been so much more than anything I could have ever expected. Um, I was blessed that I actually, I, I know one of the 2015 fighters really well, and he articulated to me what an incredible journey it was for him, how meaningful it was for him, um, and just what an incredible overall experience it was. And even with those insights, um, my expectations have been completely and utterly blown away. Um, so I came into this as a, a very personal fight, 
uh, fighting on behalf of both my grandparents who we lost to the same form of lung cancer. Um, I knew I wanted to do it from the get go. When I started training, uh, Jennifer pulled my wife into it as well. And now she's just as big a supporter as I am. Um, and, uh, and, and I knew it was going to be big and I knew it was going to be a huge commitment, but I didn't fully appreciate how deeply it would embed itself into every single aspect of my life. Um, my workplace is now deeply involved. My father and uncle's workplace is deeply involved. I think about it all the time. I dream about it all the time. Um, it's my driving force for almost everything that I do. Uh, and so 2020, 2021, it didn't matter. I'm getting in that ring and I'm having the fight with Joey and we're going to raise a whole bunch of money to stop cancer in our lifetime. And even after that, I know I will continue to be involved in this fight in one capacity or the other. So Jen, you will never be able to get rid of me. You're stuck with me now for life. Congratulations. Um, but yeah, if you're thinking about doing this fight, it's unreal. It will be the best experience of your life. I can guarantee you that. And if you want to learn more about the journey from a fighter's perspective, grab me on LinkedIn or Facebook. I'm happy to connect and, and happy to share more uh, on a one-on-one -on -one level. Amazing. Thank you so much. I, I'm just blown away by your speaking skills. Um, Dr. Irish, can you give me the thumbs up if I can put you on the screen just so people can see? Okay. I need, I need to show people who you are and I will unmute. Uh, <laughs> this is Dr. Irish, guys. If maybe, if you wouldn't mind just letting people know a little bit more eloquently what it is that you guys are doing at the hospital right now as doctors, that would be awesome. Yeah, can you hear me okay? Yep. Well, uh, first of all, thanks, Jennifer, and thanks, Virgil, and thanks to your whole uh, Fight and Cancer team, and uh, Josh, uh, uh, what, what a passionate, uh, what a passionate uh, speech. That was really great. And, uh, well, you know, everything is uh, just about as abnormal as you could possibly get. Uh, our lab uh, has been turned into, uh, as you've pointed out already, um, we're 3D printing uh, personal protective equipment and nasal swabs and our scientists are screeners at doors and uh, it's a very interesting time. It's uh, like uh, no other time I've seen before. I, I worked through SARS and SARS was, was quite frankly uh, nothing compared to this and uh, we only have to look at our economy. We have to look at you know, our, our, uh, our school kids, um, just the whole way that we're, we're practicing uh, our lives right now. I work um, one week on and then one week I go into isolation. Um, we split our teams up into two so that if one gets infected, the other team uh, can go forward so that we spend one week uh, basically um, alone. And uh, it's, it's so weird uh, actually uh, phoning patients. And in that week, I phoned patients uh, to make up for not seeing them. But uh, that's just how unusual a situation it is. So uh, it's kind of crazy. So we're fighting a, like a cancer. Uh, COVID is kind of an invisible enemy. Um, there's more questions then there are answers. And uh, this kind of charity work, which you do, helps us find those answers for cancer. Um, like the fight against COVID, it's a team. And like the fight against COVID, uh, it's a community. Uh, it's a community coming together um, to, uh, to change cancer. And uh, it's a community that doesn't come together to fight COVID. And uh, it's kind of robbed us. Uh, COVID has robbed us of uh, the most important thing that we have. When we fight something, we fight it as a team. We fight it as a community. Uh, that's what's so uh, passion. That's what's so, in some ways, cool for me when I go out to speak to charity events and to groups like yourselves who are so passionate about uh, raising money to conquer cancer in our lifetime and the fight to end cancer and things like that. It's because it brings people together in a passionate way um, to fight something that affects them, has affected their family, has affected their friends. And that's what's so destructive about this is that 
it actually forces us apart. And uh, so I hope next year, next June, uh, it's blocked off in my calendar, by the way, Jennifer, Thank that you. I'm able to give you guys all, uh, you know, a high five. And uh, in Jennifer's case, a great hug for the, all of the things that you do. And uh, I want to thank you so much. Oh, thank you so much. Oh my goodness, There's every, everyone's clapping. <laughs> um, you know what, thank you. I, I didn't give uh, Dr. Irish a heads up that I wanted him to speak because I, I know he wanted to come in as a cheerleader. So thank you so much for giving us that update. And there's a bunch of messages flooding in saying thank you so much. So we are all so grateful for uh, being able to have uh, the corner, a corner to go into and having Princess Margaret there with us and being there for Princess Margaret, I think is a better way of saying it because you guys are doing incredible things and continue to through this incredible time of our lives that we're going through. So I know we're learning a lot and I know that we're being challenged a lot, but I also know that we're going to come out stronger, just like everything that we've ever done with uh, Princess Margaret. You guys have taught us how to be fighters and how to remember that defeat is not an option. So thank you. <laughs> thank you so much. Um, guys, if anyone has any, uh, any questions, or I think we never ended up getting uh, Lance on the call, but uh, I'm sure there'll be other meetups, so we'll bring him on another time. But if, if anyone has any questions for uh, either myself or any of the sponsors, uh, and I know that there's a long ways from now until June 5th, but there's lots to do. Um, I'm feeling more inspired than ever along with the team to continue doing as much as we can. And that might not look like um, something in the form of, you know, donations. Sometimes it just looks like support. And I can tell you right now, some of the support that uh, I showed you guys at the beginning, just the fact that Paige and Rob are getting married and, you know, they got together in 2015 and they're still together now. That inspires me to continue fighting. That inspires our team to continue fighting. Um, the fact that Josh and Yulia are putting off a family and some of our other fighters are probably putting up a, off a family just to keep here and keep fighting for you guys and fighting for uh, the hospital and for the uh, Cancer Foundation. All of these things are things that are making us really keep inspired. So if anyone has any ideas or any direction, uh, we are actually already starting to um, look at selling some of the merchandise. I've never had time to go online and set up our uh, online shop, but now I'm trying to figure it out. So as soon as I put it up, I didn't realize that everyone would be going online. I've got right now the hats online. I will put a link to the, uh, to the wine online. And it's pretty incredible how fast people got on that. And I didn't realize that I hadn't set up our shipping yet so now i'm just driving stuff around toronto and i didn't realize how big our community was because now i've got stuff all the way in like vancouver one place actually uh someone in australia ordered something today can't drive there but uh this is all really great stuff so i am so proud to have you guys as a family uh virgil's in there somewhere he's turned off his camera but he's actually at the gym so if you guys want to see us every single week uh, a lot of your faces i see every saturday at our online classes, but I think we should take a group picture since we've still got a bunch of you guys on the, on the screen here. So I don't know, I feel like this, I feel like this really show us. So why don't we put up our best fists and everyone smile big. I'm gonna see if I can do this without using hands. There you go, ready? One more. Oh yeah, Aaron's got his camera on. <laughs> I've got to show you guys, uh, wait, one more, one more, Virgil, come back, one more. That's Virgil's uh, fight face. <laughs> <laughs> um, I know that some people are uh, still jumping off. Virg, uh, anything you wanted to add? I know I kind of just sprung this on you. That's a pretty epic beard he's growing, isn't it? You're, you're, not, you're not muted anymore, Virg. You can make those kisses loud. They're silent kisses. <laughs> Gotta be careful of COVID. Show of hands, guys. Anyone think that Virgil should shave his beard? I need to see more hands, guys. I'm not seeing enough hands here. <laughs> Dr. <laughs> Irish, Virg, if a doctor... <laughs> So Dr. Irish is uh, our beard sad for curing COVID, maybe? <laughs> Virgil, I'll come over with a pair of scissors. <laughs> oh but it's gosh. so comfy. It catches my popcorn. Two scalpels for that one. I'm unmuted, everybody. <laughs> I haven't gotten very much support there for shaving Virgil's beard, but... Uh, Thank you guys all for coming. You guys are all unmuted now. Uh, I really appreciate your guys' time. Uh, I see Mikey there, Mikey Galoro. Thank you for Aloe's support. Uh, all of you guys. Uh, Blair and um, if anyone wants to be amused, Blair and Arnold, uh, I'll show you guys who they are right now as well. They have some great videos. Blair is, uh, sorry, I was gonna say Blair. Arnold is our Fight Chan Cancer official videographer and, um, and editor. So he's been doing some COVID diaries and those have been great. Um, 
I think if you guys put everybody on, uh, on, on gallery view, you'll see everybody as well. But uh, pretty much all of you guys on here have in some way fought with us, uh, fought for us, and fought for the fight to end cancer. I've somehow destroyed my screen here, and I can't figure out how to get it off my face. Uh, so you guys have to finish off looking at me. Um, is there anything that anyone has? Uh, Josh says the beer is epic. But is there anything anyone else has? Otherwise, we're going to end the, the Zoom meeting the same way I see all the uh, Zoom meetings end, which is like everyone saying bye at the same time in a chaos. Um, but uh, love you guys all. Aaron, it's really good to see you. I, I see you across the street. Aaron, Aaron Schnipper lives across the street from me. Knock on your window next time I walk by. You should. I'll, I'll go for a socially distanced walk with you guys. So, uh, thank you guys all. Thank you guys all for coming out, and we'll see you guys on the next meetup. We have some more information for you. Have a good one. See you.